Today I thought what we'd do is we'd do a continuation of some of the work that we've talked about involving chopping corn heads. You know, uh, during the growing season of 2015, I put a PFR report together showing some of the visual differences we were seeing from both corn and soybeans after we had implemented a chopping uh, program out in the field at harvest time. So we were using a Capello chopping corn head and uh, did a great job for us in the field. And after we, uh, we put that PFR report out, we had some questions with growers here after harvest time saying, hey, what were the yield differences in those corn and soybeans? They, it sure looked good where they chopped it. Were there any yield differences? When we came in and we chopped stalks and then came in in a no-till soybean situation, there were some drastic differences. If you remember back from the last PFR report, I showed you some pictures of some soybeans in a chopped and non-chopped scenario. Matter of fact, here's the picture that uh, we showed you folks this summer. We saw a couple different things. Um, I guess we noted a couple different things where we chopped the stalks. The soybeans were, were taller in size. Uh, they were ahead in overall development. And there was a clear difference in the amount of residue between the row. We had 30 inch rows that we no-tilled between um, uh, the old corn stalk rows. And just a clear difference in, in uh, the amount of residue in the row that the Capello chopping had sized the residue, made smaller pieces, an incredible amount of difference in the amount of residue between the row. How did it end up yield wise? We took the strips side by side and we were seeing a 3.2 bushel advantage of those soybeans where we implemented a chopping program. And that's pretty substantial because, you know, using the current price of soybeans, you know, we're looking at around a $30 an acre net advantage, a net gain by having those extra soybean yields from chopping the stalks. And again, it wasn't another trip in the field. It was a planned pass at harvest time, chopping those stalks, taking care of that residue out there in the field while we were harvesting. So just a tremendous uh, response in the soybeans. As far as corn goes, we saw some drastic differences out in the field at our Central Illinois PFR Center. At Central Illinois PFR in Downs, Illinois, we had two different scenarios. We had a no-till continuous corn program and then a conventional till program. And this was our first year of continuous corn, so it's one of the toughest uh, as far as carbon penalty goes. So we really wanted to look at the difference of chopping the stalks versus just using stalk stompers. Again, a no-till in, in a conventional till uh, situation. When we look at the yield results, let's start off with the no-till. And uh, you would think that chopping the stalks would have a tremendous response in a no-till environment, and it did. That Capello chopping corn head that we used in that no-till scenario at Central Illinois in 2015 gave us yield advantages, increases of over 25 bushel per acre. Tremendous response in a no-till environment. How did it do in a conventional situation, a conventional tillage program? did very well again over 15 bushel of a yield advantage by sizing that residue. So excellent performance from our chopping corn heads this year. Some of the observations that we have made from our chopping head study on the corn side is really threefold. One is the sizing and the fraction of residue is just tremendous with that chopping head. It will do a very good job of turning some stalks into pure dust um, right on top of the soil surface. Most of it will be cut in two to three inch pieces that will have the ability um, to break down faster and much easier. That's going to be the key component, especially if we're going to use a corn chopping head in front of continuous corn. That's going to be a huge plus. One of the other things we noticed uh, in implementing this study was horsepower requirements. We, we thought with the chopping corn head it was going to take a lot of horsepower to run that corn head. We learned two things. With our 5088 case uh, IH combine that we have at Central Illinois PFR, that's the smallest combine case IH makes. And it was an eight row chopping head that we had on that combine and it proved to be a little too much for it when we were trying to unload on the go uh, with high yielding corn. Other than that though, it managed it just fine. As we go to a larger combine, this year we used a New Holland 9060, much larger combine than that 5088, and we didn't even know that chopping head was on the front of it. No horsepower drag whatsoever. It handled that corn head just fine. You wouldn't have known the difference. The other thing we've noticed with the chopping head from Capello is the amount of grain loss from the corn head. Considerably less uh, a loss coming from the head. So as we get into dry corn, a lot of times we get shatter and we get corn falling through the corn head right on top of the ground or over the top of it. One of the things that we've noticed with the Capello is when we go out and we do um, head loss counts out in the field, we're finding 25 to 30 percent less corn loss out in the field. So tremendous benefit for that Capello chopping head, being able to save every last kernel that we can get. 
Thanks for watching this Beck Cybrid's PFR report involving chopping corn heads and some of our residue management trials at Beck Cybrid's. For more information, you can go to our website at beckcybrids.com, click on the Practical Farm Research tab, and you'll see all the data from this year's Practical Farm Research work as well as past years as well. Thanks for watching.